10.38, we are back in regular session. Tell me when you got the tape running. Okay, we'll continue with old business and next on the... Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Regional planning, Charlene. Sorry. Um, just wanted, we were hoping to have um, a quote for the CSB restroom. We thought we had a quote. Um, it was actually a pledge letter for United Way from one of the contractors. So we received no quotes for the CSB restroom. So we put it out to bid. We talked to the state. They said we could do quotes. We requested quotes from four or five different other entities. We received no quotes. We have until about August of next year to complete the project. Um, we're going to put this back out for quotes, but we want to reconsider the structure of how we do that and probably won't be until after the beginning of the year that we put it back out for quotes. And we tried to stay as local as we could. I think we're gonna have to go as far out as we possibly can. Try to get What one. was the estimate? Uh, about 17.9. Got a couple contractors in the room. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are interested, let, give me your card. We'll make sure you get it. Um, the, the quote package when we send it out. Um, it's not a it, it's not a hard process. It's just we need to get it underway so we can get the money. So. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And the old business, Sunny Yeah. So we received our notice. Um, from the attorneys representing the Central Wind Project, and it is that time they have an application that's complete, and they uh, our window is open to intervene. Again, we have 30 days to, to intervene, and we time stamp that October 17th, so you know sometime mid November is what we're looking at to respond with an intervention. Um, Again, I think everybody in the room knows this, but uh, to reiterate, interve intervention simply means that we want to be a part of the process. It's not an opinion of um, the, the project. It's just simply a, a notification that we want to be involved in the legal process, and that requires us to have legal counsel because it is a, uh, a legal proceeding. So what I'd like to propose is that instead of going forward kind of alone, what happens in person? that the, the affected townships, we get together with them and have a joint meeting and see if we can have some sort of common course of action going forward. Uh, the affected townships are Venice, Eden, Reed, Bloom, and Scipio. So, um, because they each individually, just as we did with the Republic Wind Project, will have they'll have they're under the same time frame. Or yep. they right? Yep. Uh, within 30 days, to you need to make notification whether they're choosing to intervene or not. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I was. And so this would just, I, I think, would. I think it's a good idea to bring some organization to it for us as a group, and we call <coughs> Seneca County. Right. Um, and I, I think, not that anything prescribes we have to do this, but I think it's it's yeah. an innovative idea to maybe give it, given the nature of the topic. I mean, it's been an intense topic for a long time, and this versus assumptions being said, if all the players are in the room, if that can be be done to be able to share knowledge we all everybody's on the same page yeah and I guess you know and I said this in Venice Township last night if there was a pothole in a intersection of a county and township road and the county said we want to fill that pothole and the township said we want to empty that pothole you know instead of funding both sides filling and emptying how about we get together and talk and maybe the township's reason is uh, we want ruffle strips because we want to slow down Traffic. So, you know, getting behind what they want, what we want, I, I don't think we're that far apart. So, until we sit down and have the conversation, I don't think we know what, what either side wants. So, I have had some um, some thoughts. I just, you know, there are more than options than just intervening, and I, I just want to kind of run through those at this point. Um, we could not intervene in the process. 
uh, which just means we wouldn't go to Columbus, we wouldn't hire attorneys. Uh, all the township trustees, all the commissioners could speak uh, at the public hearing that's held in the, in the area. So, uh, you know, there, there's two meetings. There's the, the adjudicated meeting down in Columbus requires an attorney and then the local public meeting. Uh, so any you know, residents can go and, and represent their own opinion there at that hearing and, and trustees. So that would just be all of us agreeing to not intervene. Don't lawyer up. Um, second option, which I think makes some sense, is uh, we can work together uh, to create one unified county position, uh, talk about what our common ground is, you know, protecting groundwater, protecting roads, the revenue, the wildlife, whatever, whatever the common ground is, uh, there's things that we, I think we all agree we want to see happen if these projects are built. Um, if, you know, if we got agreed upon, uh, you know, statement or policy for the, the project, then we could collectively use the prosecutor and intervene in the, the legal hearing. Uh, what that the, the, the flip side of that is it would limit our ability to speak at the public hearing as elected official. So you can do one or the other, uh, but uh, not both is what I'm told. Um, you know, the third and I think the worst outcome is that each political subdivision decides to go their own way, hire their own attorney, and, you know, we rep you know we're in at adverse positions at the hearing in, in Columbus. But... I mean, there's probably more options, you know, go with an open mind, but just to kind of quantify what the, I think the options and the possible outcomes are, I think that, that's kind of where we're at. I tried to think through a little bit what the meeting format would be, and I've asked Charlene to do some, some legwork on figuring out if, if, since she is our multi-jurisdictional body, I was hoping that maybe she could coordinate the, the, the meeting and uh, what I'm thinking is that we'd have an evening meeting, you know, kind of tentatively looking at November 7th. That seems to work for a lot of people. I don't think we're going to hit everybody, uh, but, you know, that, that's a thought in the evening so people can get there, get, get someplace close to the Republic, uh, to the footprint and uh, the Republic Town Hall is owned by Scipio Township, so I think we can probably uh, get that at little or no cost. You know, I talked to Derek Devine about this, and he said his one concern is that each township would, we could have a joint meeting, but each township would have to keep their own minutes. So we might have to work through that. I don't know if we can record it, and that counts for everybody's, or if everybody has to do their own minutes or, or whatever. But we would have to, they would each have to keep their own minutes, and any vote would, of course, be their own vote. I mean, we'll get back to vote. There's not a format for a, a Joint caucus or whatever. And that was the statement I was going to make from your previous slide in the in that second option was there really isn't a, a means of that we need a consensus countywide. I mean you've got you've got down there need a <coughs> countywide position. I don't know that we're going to. That's a tall order to fill. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just I don't know that we anticipate that to be. I don't. I yeah, so no, I get it. No, it's good thoughts it. for discussion. <laughs> but I mean, I, you know, I can foresee uh, us coming to an agreement on five things that we're concerned about, and all voting to support that, and that being our position. Oh, okay. I mean, that's gotcha. not. Gotcha. It's, I mean, not everybody's going to get everything they want. I mean, that's not. I mean, that's not the way compromise works or government <laughs> works. So, um, I, I, that might my, my my thought. And then. Uh, And this is just, you know, I'm just spitballing. I'm just trying to think through this. But what I was thinking is we could have a town hall meeting in advance so that anybody who wanted to say something about the intervention process, whether we should or shouldn't, or something that should be included or shouldn't be included, would have the opportunity to speak. Uh, and we just have, a, you know, my thought is just have them reserved through uh, regional planning. And once we know what that is going to look like and what the date is and the time frames, uh, we make that announcement on regional planning's website that slots are open or something like that or the Facebook page and say, you know, I don't know what the best way is to, to allocate those spots, but, you know, have an hour conversation uh, with the public before 
and then the trustees would be invited uh, they certainly don't need to participate uh, it's just something we're trying to offer to maybe you know save the taxpayers some money and get a common position uh, but we would gather and and adjourn you know after we've we've come to a consensus uh, if if no consensus is reached then I guess we're just um, you know back where we were uh, uh, each taking our own stand in our own you know political subdivision but you know I think it's worth the effort and then if if this would uh, happen to be successful then when we receive the notifications for the Republic wind hearing we could could use the same format for the Republic wind project and bring everybody together and see if we could find a time and and date that would work for them and sit down and see if we can find some common ground and a way to, to move forward. So. Does the the window open back up on the because of the scheduled change of the Republican project on once again needing to decide if they're going to intervene or not or is that that's already in place and even though the because they're I guess I just I don't know the legal <laughs> answer to that <laughs> But what I, the, 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 the answer that I do know is if, if we wanted to substitute counsel or if we wanted to amend our intervention, all of us would be able to do that. So, but until we have line of sight to when those meetings are going to be, um, you know, we don't really have those, those answers. But, uh, you know, if somebody has agreed to, has, has passed a resolution to intervene, and they've hired counsel. If we had an agreed upon position, then they could substitute counsel. Or if we uh, would agree to not intervene, then you know they could we could all withdraw our intervention. That, but I don't know if there's a, the window opens up so that we can have that that new interveners can go. There. And this is the the government entity intervention process. You know. Personal interventions are, are you know, handled differently, and there's information about that on the Ohio Power Signing Board. Well, I think it's, I appreciate your thought and work put in to come up with a solution that maybe works to, to help everybody get on the same page, to everybody to understand where each other's coming from. If there is some consensus on any particular parts of it, that's great. Um, but at least, I, I figure it will. You know, we're, we get accused often in writing verbally and otherwise of dividing the county, and th th that's, I don't think, anybody in this room's goal. Um, it is the fact of what's happening because either the lack of understanding solid facts or, you know, the confusion. There's two different projects, we've got two different companies, we got two different sets of townships, you know, so there's just a lot of factors that lead to that confusion, and that's not anybody's goals. The companies, ours, the citizens, anybody's. But so I, I, I think, and I, I'm assuming your thought is just to get this so we can start discussing it and and, and be thinking about it because the 30 day window is right. is open. And so when we get, when Mike's, Mike's back, we can continue the discussions and go from there. But it's good food for thought. Yeah, I, I just wanted to get format and venue set and then you know we'll see where the process goes. We'll still you know everybody will still have the opportunity to react and do their own thing if this doesn't uh, pan <coughs> out. But at least we can say that we you know we gave it gave it a try. Are you considering what time frame? Like you said, evening, like five, like seven. Five thirty was thrown around as as working for some folks. Um, I, we're not going to get what everybody. Was the date? You were looking at November 7th, that would be a Wednesday. So that's a proposal. That's mm -hmm. a proposed date. I just want to put a hold on our calendar so that way. Um, we, we understand that there's another meeting at 7 o'clock that will affect some of the trustees. So, some township meetings, probably. Uh, it's the, that township meeting, exactly. No, I didn't check that. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's another meeting. It's the Attic and Venice Reed Fire Board meeting, I believe, um, is that night. Yeah. Um, so, you know. It's not to be rude to nobody, but we always have to understand that other people have other commitments and time constraints. So we'll have um, a strict limit on time, yeah. and we want to make sure that we make it available to as many people as we can. 
at least to open the conversation and try to take a proactive approach and move forward. I'm not guaranteeing that we're all going to get to the same conclusion, but I think it is commendable to say that our elected officials are trying to talk to one another and regional planning as a liaison is really willing to open that door and facilitate that process. Um, so it's commendable that our elected officials want to sit down and speak to one another about this. Yeah, I think it's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, and thank you for your willingness to, to serve that role, but that is that is a great fit for regional planning. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Okay. So, any thoughts? I mean, are we okay to proceed and try and schedule a meeting? And I, I'm okay if we've got, you know, you got the interested parties. I, I guess I don't know why not. In like said, we might just going to need more discussion on maybe the outline, how how it's going to go, to make sure we all understand and that kind of thing. And yeah, what I would propose is that uh, regional planning put the finishing touches on the ideas and make them available on their website and send some sort of formal invite to the townships uh, it's free will they don't have to participate um, obviously some of them are going to be conflicted when they're there uh, but they're still certainly our township trustees some uh, aren't going to be able to make it and, and some probably won't want to take action but the sense I got from the people I've talked to is they want to participate and have the conversation so yeah, they may wait till they go back to their own meetings to do whatever right um, with that Charlene, what would your thoughts would they need to have with your if you're formally sending them something in writing mm -hmm. um, something as well from the prosecutor who does represent all the townships in because right away their questions are going to be can we do that can we be there is that how does this take care of because can it be one countywide notification we have a 24-hour meeting notice mm -hmm. I'm assuming they're under the something very similar under the the whole chapter that takes cover governs townships and the ORC. Right, so. it's the same. So um, I would, it's been vetted through Derek already that this is acceptable, that each township, if you want to be able to take action during that meeting, you have to call it a special meeting at least 24 hours in advance. <coughs> um, that is at your discretion. We're not asking, <coughs> regional planning's not telling you you have to do that. Um, we would encourage you to call it a special meeting so that you can if you so choose once you take action you could do so um, we vetted with the prosecutor on whether or not we could record the meeting do the index and give that out to everybody as their minutes he said no we could not that everybody has to take their minutes as they normally do so that would be a necessity of course we're just trying to make it easier on people because we have the feasibility to record it and give it to them um, but you would definitely have to notify it as a special meeting if your entity wants to be able to take action. Um, even if you're thinking, well, we really don't think we're going to take action, but your mind could change while you're there and all of a sudden your guys are, you know, a township trustee group could be very into taking action by the time it's all said and done or the commissioners could be. So we would be glad to um, include with our invitation a public announcement that you could use for notice of special meeting um, and that way they don't have to redraft something everybody's using the same public notice you just insert your entity into it we'd be glad to draft that for everyone as well make it a little easier for everybody um, but again, just beginning to think through the process of what this looks like with that number of elected officials there and conducting that I have to wonder if three public town halls made enough a very good question because it's it, you know you're going to need some space you know for, for people to be able to sit and to hear and so I don't know if you know the school is going to be an option we'd have to look at uh, yeah. some other I'm venue not that's not a little bit larger mm -hmm. I'm not anything. yeah I just just, 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 I, I, I just something <laughs> I'm thinking of immediately <laughs> that you know I know when we're in there and the long tables for a dinner is one thing but you know you worst thing is if you know sitting at those kind of tables and, and participating doesn't work you mm -hmm. know for yeah, we can look at that. Yeah, yeah that was a, a free venue. Right, and, um, right. you know, Perfect. we're all about saving as much money as we can. Yeah. So if it's free, that's always a <laughs> great possibility. When I reached out to a few of the township trustees yesterday and talked to people, there was some concern about, you know, if it's a public meeting, we're going to have an outpour of people that may want to come. So we want to make sure that we have space for them. So we will need to vet that a little bit more just to kind of make a determination on it. Sure. Um, and and I, I would say, the date. <laughs> yeah, the next couple days we should probably hammer that down and get it solidified and uh, work with Shane and a few other people to make sure that we get that just the way it's supposed to be on location and time and date um, 
and it is a good consideration to think of you know is that location big enough or do we need to keep that location or you know is there another venue that might be more apropos for it sure so the other thing I'm not sure I mentioned, but Derek did say that he would be available and would come to the meeting, so he could, you know, on the fly answer questions as it relates to who can who can vote and some of these questions that come up at, at meetings. And yeah, you had that on the slide. I so um, that, I thought that would, I appreciated that that he would be willing to to come to an evening meeting, and he held a couple dates. If this one doesn't happen, so. I think it's like I said. I think it's a, a good thought process. It's to an attempt to try something that just makes communications easier and stronger and better. And I can't see any reason not to move forward with it. I applaud your <laughs> efforts in doing that. So, so do, do we want to just have a formal make motion? Can I make a motion and we can just vote that we'll have a, a special meeting? Sure. I'd, um, like, a, I'd like to make a motion that we have a special we, meeting. We don't have the details. A special meeting on November 7th at 530 at the Republic town hall if we have to move the date or the time or the venue we'll do so in a subsequent meeting but get to to a point where people are holding the date and time i'll second and my discussion would just be that is that it's not this is a, not a matter of anybody deciding to intervene not to intervene it's just to have a group meeting discussion of the intervention process mm -hmm. and what's before us and individual legal entities or elected entities can do what they feel necessary. Roll call. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Brings us if there's no further old business, that brings us to new business. Resolutions. I have um, appropriation adjustments, uh, maintenance and repair fund, moving uh, $5,000 from Culver's to contract projects, also from the roads to contract projects, total of $10,000. Um, soil and water is moving some money uh from the salary line to contract services and their service fees for a total of four thousand three hundred and seventy eight dollars um i have a request uh, to put one thousand forty four dollars and seventeen cents into the contract service let me pull that one up it's not uh, that was at the request of common please two Their note is uh, the prior year appropriations need to be uh, transferred. So they must have two separate lines. No. Um, and then the public assistance funds, they're moving um, a total of $120,147 from their contract services to their public assistance and supplies. Um, I have a supplemental appropriation. Uh, for the general fund, this is $5,000. This is for the extension office um, that the county had agreed to pay for for the remainder of 2018. Um, they sent us the request for $5,000. That's what we agreed to. Um, and then I have uh, we needed uh, $420.27 into the no retirement to get that paid off. So those are all. Oh, wait, I do have. A fund advance from the general fund to the Wolf Creek Petition Ditch Fund, uh, an amount of thirty-six thousand. It's just to just for the cash um, to get that item complete. There was those two change order, two change orders that we had approved about a month ago. We needed the cash in place. So and then I have a resolution authorizing the emergency management service contract with the local LAPC which is local emergency planning commission on behalf of the EMA um, they've agreed to do normally it's been set at a $20,000 uh, fee for that service uh, with LAPC and EMA discussing it they kind of come to um, 20,000 not quite what their revenue is anticipating so they agreed to do 90 percent of the current year's collection or current year's grant 
So um, LAPC has voted on this and they were okay with that. So. Um, oh, this is six, 16, was it then? The total amount yeah. was. $16,487.10. What was collected was $18,319. So 90% is that $16,000. Thank you. And again, they're only going to do a one year, one year contract at a time. I have a <coughs> resolution rescinding the board's orders of October 16th for the supplement full appropriations to the TCAP funding. Uh, they didn't have the money available. And then I have a resolution authorizing the disposal of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit county owned property. It's a 2000 GMC van. Um, this was Crossways van. It no longer uh, ran. Uh, they called uh, Highway 101 and uh, got $200 for the van. They had to come and get it. And that's all the resolutions I have. The only discussion piece I had, uh, the Wolf Creek, I know it's the cash transfer, yes. but we are, just so everybody knows, we're withholding final payment yes. on that until we do a fi final inspection. Because yep. we we have to walk that again just to make sure that some of the cleanup work just put it out there. Yep. Motion to accept all. I will second. Further comments or concerns? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Commissioner Kirschberg? All approved. Thank you. There's no other business. We'll have an opportunity for citizens' comments at this time. Does anyone like to make citizens' comments? If you have to please state your name and where you reside. And we'll go from there. Jim Fiesel, Eden Township. Um, on the meeting, as I understand it, you're talking about a public part of the meeting and then a kind of like an executive session, you might call it. Is that what public? That? All public. All public. That, that, would, that would be my desire, yeah. Okay, because mm -hmm. I was thought I heard something said about part of it would be private. You said no. something about a town hall. You talk I, and I, the question I would is you think it on the same day or part of the same meeting. Maybe. I just didn't think it made sense to have public comments after we had our conversation. So we'd the, get the input first and then everybody would be welcome to stay. Okay. So and it'd be a public the whole meeting. thing would be open to the public. That would be my goal. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be my goal. Yeah. Uh -huh. Has to be. Sorry I didn't make that clear. Yes. Greg Smith, Smith Bloom Township. Um, I guess first off, I think, you know, from the Anna Wayne Group's perspective, I think we would support, you know, a, a joint meeting. I think any time both sides of any discussion get together for, for discussion, I think that's always always good. I'm I'm skeptical whether or not any common ground will be reached, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't at least have the conversation. A uh, question I have is, are all townships invited throughout the county, or is it just the ones in the footprint? I, my, my, my thought is that it would be the affected townships. Everybody would be welcome to be there as a citizen. As in terms a township of trustee. As a township trustee, it would just be... Right. Mm -hmm. The verbs, Venice, Eden, yeah. Reed, yeah. Blue. Okay, and then uh, <laughs> I guess my comment, and you can take it for what it's worth, um, in terms of the venue, uh, you're going to need something bigger. Um, I know the Republic Town Hall, I mean, I can guarantee you on the public side, at a minimum, you're going to have 300 people there, if probably more. I mean, at our meeting last Tuesday night, we estimate we had 530 people there. When we announced this, given the format and the discussion there will be a lot of people there so just take that into consideration you know I, I think we should welcome as many people from the public as, as we can but let's be sure to have a, a venue that will accommodate them 
Yeah. I mean, I may need the Psyche school. I don't know. Wow. We can ask at the gym or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Chris Eichholz, Bloom Township. Um, I wanted to issue a special thank you to Shane and Holly and Mike uh, for attending our Seneca Anti Win Union meeting we had uh, last Tuesday. It really meant a lot that you guys could put that into your schedule. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Gordy Gray with uh, S Power, uh, Chicago, Illinois. Um, uh, just want a couple of things. Um, first, wanted to uh, express our uh, opposition to the attack ads uh, and, and mailings at, uh, at Mike Kirshner. Um, and unequivocally make clear we're in no way associated with those. Um, we don't even uh, contribute to political action committees, so there's no indirect uh, association uh, whatsoever. How do you feel about YouTube videos attacking me? Uh, <laughs> we <laughs> we do not support attacks. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Go ahead, I'm sorry. And and we've we've let Mike know this, and just wanted to let everyone else know this, and and uh, we respect Mike's work and, and all of your work as, as public uh, 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 servants. Um, and then, uh, and, and I also appreciate your your proposal here to have a, a dialogue in, in the um, OPSB process uh, and, and try to find common ground. Um, we encourage participation in that process and to the extent folks can find common ground, I think that's going to be the most constructive and effective way to participate in that process. So uh, thanks for your your ideas here and efforts. Greg Smith again. But Shane, those were your words, public record. That's a lot different than a, a PAC-sponsored mailer. A lot different. That's public information in your own words, so we didn't twist that around at all. The other thing I'd like to say is the mailer, and, that, and Commissioner Stacy, I appreciate your opening comments because I think that was appropriate. Um, but also, the economic prosperity project is a Columbus State, Columbus based political action uh, committee that is a pro win lobby. So we got outside interests, again, trying to influence our local election, just for the record. I hope people will realize that the negative um, things of any campaign, to me, appears to be, in, across Seneca County, always a major turnoff at any level. Mm -hmm. And um, we just we don't, we don't like any of that. And we don't like it to get here, to be here. Just another quick question on the meeting. Um, do you have any intent of bringing in any people from out of the county to try to influence our decision, or will you let it up to the people in the county? I don't. I don't really have any hard and fast thoughts on that. My thought was to limit it to people inside the, the footprint. But that was my initial thought. I mean, it's a town hall meeting. If we have the citizens, it would be my thought on it. Yeah, of and then. The, obviously, the elected officials portion is for those elected bodies and those <coughs> representatives to to be part of that discussion. I, I appreciate the thought of having the town hall in advance of it. it makes good sense. Mm -hmm. So, okay. there's no further comments. We get adjourned. Whatever. This meeting adjourned. It's 11:20.